Kelsier, what's going on? Vin dashed down the street behind Kelsier. He slowed just a bit. I saw Renault and Spook in that first cart. The Ministry must have hit Renault's canal procession. The people in those cages are the servants, staff, and guards we hired to work at the mansion. The canal procession. The Ministry must know that Renault was a fake. Marsh broke after all. Behind them, Ham came out of the building and onto the street. Breeze and Dachshund were slower in coming. We have to work quickly. Kelsier picked up his pace again. Cal! Vin grabbed his arm. Kelsier, you can't save them! They're too well guarded and it's daylight in the middle of the city! You'll just get yourself killed! He paused, halting in the street, turning in Vin's grasp. He looked into her eyes, disappointed. You don't understand what this is all about, do you, Vin? You never did. I let you stop me once before on the hillside by the battlefield. Not this time. This time I could do something. But... He shook his arm free. You still have some things to learn about friendship, Vin. I hope someday you realize what they are. Then he took off, charging in the direction of the carts. <laughs> Ham barreled past Vin, heading in a different direction, pushing his way through Ska on their way to the square. Vin stood stupidly for a few moments, standing in the falling ash as Doxon caught up to her. It's insanity! We can't do this, Dox! We're not invincible! We're not helpless, either. Breeze joined them, pointing toward a side street. There. We need to get me to a place where I can see the soldiers. Vin let them tow her along, suddenly feeling shame mix with her worry. Kelsier... Kelsier tossed away a pair of empty vials, their contents ingested. He ducked through one final alleyway, bursting out onto an eerily empty thoroughfare. The prisoner carts rolled toward him, entering a small courtyard square formed by the intersection of two streets. Each rectangular vehicle was lined with bars. Each one was packed with people who were now distinctly familiar. Servants, soldiers, housekeepers. Some were rebels, many were just regular people. None of them deserved death. Too many Ska have died already. Hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands. Not today, no more. He dropped a coin and jumped, pushing himself through the air in a wide arc. Soldiers looked up, pointing. Kelsier landed directly in their center. The soldiers turned in surprise. Kelsier crouched amid them, bits of ash falling from the sky. Then he flared steel, standing and pushing outward. The burst of alimentic power hurled soldiers away by their breastplates, tossing a dozen men into the air, sending them crashing into companions and walls. Kelsier spun, pushing against a group of soldiers and sending himself flying toward a prison cart. He smashed into it, flaring his steel and grabbing the metal door with his hands. Kelsier ripped the door free with a burst of pewter-enhanced power, then tossed it toward a group of approaching soldiers. Go! Kelsier jumped down and landed lightly in the street. He spun and came face to face with a tall figure wearing a brown robe. Kelsier paused, stepping back as the tall form reached up, lowering his hood, revealing a pair of eyes impaled by spikes. Damnation. Doxon pulled Breeze into an alley. Vin followed them in, crouching in the shadows. What? Inquisitor. Breeze pointed toward a robed figure standing before Kelsier. What? It's a trap. Soldiers began to pile into the square, appearing from hidden side streets. Kelsier, get out of there! Kelsier pushed off a fallen guard, throwing himself backward with a flip over one of the prison carts. He landed in a crouch, eyeing the new squads of soldiers. Many of them carried staves and wore no armor. Haze killers. The Inquisitor pushed himself through the ash-filled air, landing in front of Kelsier. The creature smiled. It's the same man. The Inquisitor from before. Where's the girl? Why only one of you? <laughs> I won the draw. Yep. Kelsier flared pewter, dashing to the side as the Inquisitor pulled out a pair of obsidian axes. The square was quickly becoming clogged with soldiers. The Inquisitor bore down on him. <laughs> he reached out, pulling against one of the still full carts and yanking himself into the air over a group of soldiers. <sighs> He landed, then dashed to the cart, intending to free its occupants. Kelsier glanced up just in time to see a steel-eyed monster grinning down at him from atop the vehicle. Kelsier pushed himself backward, feeling the wind of an axe head swing beside his head. He landed smoothly, but immediately had to jump to the side as a group of soldiers attacked. As he landed, he reached out, pulling against one of the carts to anchor himself, and pulled against the fallen iron door he had thrown before. The barred door lurched into the air and crashed through the squad of soldiers. The Inquisitor attacked from behind, but Kelsier jumped away. 
The still tumbling door careened across the cobblestones in front of him, and as he passed over it, Kelsier pushed, sending himself streaking into the air. Finn was right. Below, the Inquisitor watched him, trailing him with unnatural eyes. I shouldn't have done this. Below, a group of soldiers rounded up the Ska that he had freed. I should run. Try to lose the Inquisitor. I'd done it before. But he couldn't. He wouldn't. Not this time. He had compromised too many times before. Even if it cost him everything else, he had to free those prisoners. And then, as he began to fall, he saw a group of men charging the crossroads. They bore weapons, but no uniforms. At their head ran a familiar form. Ham! So that's where you went. What is it? Vin craned to see into the square. Above, Kelsier's form plunged back toward the fight, dark cloak trailing behind him. It's one of our soldier units. Ham must have fetched them. How many? We kept them in patches of a couple hundred. So they'll be outnumbered. Doxon nodded. I'm going out. No, you're not. <laughs> Doxon firmly grabbed her cloak and pulled her back. I don't want a repeat of what happened to you the last time you faced one of those monsters. But I- Kel will be just fine. He'll try to stall long enough for Ham to free the prisoners. Then he'll run. Watch. Vin stepped back and looked at Breeze. Yes, you're afraid. Let's focus on that. Soothe everything else away. Leave you terrified. That's an Inquisitor and a Mistborn fighting. You don't want to interfere with that. Vin glanced back toward the square, where she saw a soldier drop his staff and flee. There are other ways to fight. She knelt beside Breeze. How can I help? <laughs> Kelsier ducked back from the Inquisitor again as Ham's unit crashed into the Imperial soldiers and began cutting its way toward the prisoner carts. The attack diverted the attention of the regular soldiers, who appeared all too happy to leave Kelsier and the Inquisitor to their solitary battle. To the side, Kelsier could see Ska beginning to clog the streets around the small courtyard, the fighting drawing the attention of those waiting up ahead at the Fountain Square. Kelsier could see other squads of Imperial soldiers trying to push their way toward the fight, but the thousands of Ska crowding the streets seriously slowed their progress. <gasps> the Inquisitor swung and Kelsier dodged. The creature was obviously growing frustrated. To the side, a small group of Ham's men reached one of the prisoner carts and broke open its lock, freeing the prisoners. The rest of Ham's men kept the Imperial soldiers busy as the prisoners fled. Kelsier smiled, eyeing the annoyed Inquisitor. Kelsier turned in shock. A well-dressed nobleman was pushing his way through the soldiers toward the center of the fighting. He carried a dueling cane and was protected by two beleaguered bodyguards, but he mostly avoided harm by virtue of neither side being certain of wanting to strike down a man of obvious noble blood. Ellen Venture turned to one of the soldiers. Who told you to raid House Renault's convoy? Who authorized this? Great. Kelsier kept a wary eye on the Inquisitor. The creature regarded Kelsier with a twisted, hateful expression. You just go right on hating me. I only have to hang on long enough for Ham to free the prisoners. Then I can lead you away. The Inquisitor reached out and casually beheaded a fleeing servant as she ran by. No! The creature grabbed another victim and raised its axe. All right! Kelsier strode forward, pulling a pair of vials from his sash. All right! You want to fight me? Come on! (laughs) The creature pushed the captured woman aside and strode toward Kelsier. Kelsier flicked the corks off and downed both vials at once, then tossed them aside. Metals flared in his chest, burning alongside his rage. His brother, dead. His wife, dead. Family, friends, and heroes, all dead. You push me to seek revenge? Well, you shall have it! Kelsier paused a few feet in front of the Inquisitor. Fists clenched. He flared his steel in a massive push. Around him, people were thrown back by their metal as they were hit by the awesome, invisible wave of power. The square, packed with Imperial soldiers, prisoners, and rebels, opened up in a small pocket around Kelsier and the Inquisitor. Let's do it, then. Dead and dying men collapsed to the cobblestones. Ska crowded the roads. Heat from a smoky sun burned the streets, and ash fell from the sky. Kelsier dashed forward, flaring pewter and whipping out his daggers. He burned Atium, as did the Inquisitor, and they both probably had enough to last for an extended fight. Kelsier slashed twice in the hot air, striking at the Inquisitor, his arms a blur. The creature dodged amid an insane vortex of Atium shadows, then swung an axe. Kelsier jumped, pewter lending his leap inhuman height, and passed just over the swinging weapon. 
He reached out and pushed against a group of fighting soldiers behind him, throwing himself forward. He planted both feet in the Inquisitor's yeah. face and kicked off, flipping backward in the air. As Kelsier fell, he pulled on a soldier, yanking himself backward. The soldier was pulled off his feet by the force of the iron pull, and he began to streak toward Kelsier. Both men flew in the air. Kelsier flared iron, pulling against a patch of soldiers to his right while still pulling against the single soldier. The result was a pivot. Kelsier flew to the side, and the soldier, held as if by tether to Kelsier's body, swung in a wide arc like a ball on a chain. The Inquisitor bounced off the iron cage, falling to its hands and knees. A line of blood ran down the creature's face across its eye tattoos, but it looked up, smiling. It didn't seem the least bit dizzy as it stood. Kelsier landed. Damn! With an incredible burst of speed, the Inquisitor grabbed the empty box-like prison cell by a pair of bars, then ripped the entire thing free of the cartwheels. Bloody hell! The creature spun and hurled the massive iron cage at Kelsier, who stood only a few feet away. There was no time to dodge. A building stood right behind him. If he pushed himself back, he'd be crushed. The cage crashed toward him, and he jumped, using a steel push to guide his body through the open doorway of the spinning cage. He twisted within the cell, pushing outward in all directions, holding himself in the metal cage's exact center as it smashed into the wall and bounced free. Kelsier let himself drop, landing on the underside of the roof as the cage slowly slid to a halt. Through the bars, he could see the Inquisitor watching him amid a sea of fighting soldiers, its body surrounded by a twisting, dashing, moving cloud of atium images. The Inquisitor nodded its head to Kelsier in a slight sign of respect. Yeah! Kelsier pushed out, flaring pewter to keep from crushing himself. The cage's metal top flipped into the air, bursting outward. Kelsier pulled the bars behind him and pushed the ones in front of him, sending a stream of metal shooting toward the Inquisitor. The creature raised a hand, expertly dividing the large missiles. Kelsier, however, followed the bars with his own body, shooting himself toward the Inquisitor with a steel push. The Inquisitor pulled himself to the side, using an unfortunate soldier as an anchor. The man was wrenched away from his duel. The Inquisitor jumped, pushing against the soldier and crushing the man to the ground. The Inquisitor shot into the air. Kelsier slowed himself with a push against a group of soldiers tracking the Inquisitor. Behind him, the top of the cage crashed back to the ground. Kelsier blasted against it and hurled himself upward after the Inquisitor. Flakes of ash streaked past him. Instead, the Inquisitor turned, pulling against something below. The creature switched directions immediately, instead hurling toward Kelsier. Head-on collision. Bad idea for the guy without spikes in his head. Kelsier frantically pulled against a soldier, lurching downward as the Inquisitor passed diagonally overhead. Kelsier flared pewter and crashed into the soldier he had pulled up toward him. The two of them spun in midair. Fortunately, the soldier wasn't one of Ham's. Sorry, friend. Kelsier pushed himself to the side. The soldier shot away, eventually smashing into the side of a building as Kelsier used him to soar over the battlefield. Below, Ham's main squad had finally reached the last prison cart. Unfortunately, several more groups of Imperial soldiers had pushed their way through the gawking ska crowds. One of them was a large team of archers, armed with obsidian-tipped arrows. Kelsier let himself fall. The archers set up, obviously preparing to fire straight into the fighting crowd. They would kill some of their own soldiers, but the brunt of their attack would be borne by the fleeing prisoners. Kelsier dropped to the cobblestones. He reached to the side, pulling against some discarded bars from the cage he had destroyed. They flew toward him. The archers drew, but he could see their atium shadows. Kelsier released the bars and pushed himself to the side just slightly, allowing the bars to fly between the archers and the fleeing prisoners. The archers fired. Kelsier grabbed the bars, flaring both steel and iron, pushing against one tip of each bar and pulling against the opposite tip. The bars lurched in the air, immediately beginning to spin like furious lunatic windmills. Most of the flying arrows were sprayed to the side by the spinning rods of iron. The archer stood, stupefied, as Kelsier jumped to the side again, then pulled lightly on the bars, flipping them up into the air in front of him. He pushed, sending the bars crashing toward the archers. Kelsier turned away, his eyes seeking his true foe. Where's that creature hiding? He looked into a scene of chaos. Men fought, ran, fled, and died, each one bearing a prophetic atium shadow to Kelsier's eyes. In this case, however, the shadows effectively doubled the number of people moving on the battlefield and only served to increase the sense of confusion. More and more soldiers were arriving. Many of Ham's men were down. Most of the rest were retreating. Fortunately, they could simply discard their armor and blend into the ska crowds. Kelsier was more worried about that last prisoner cart, the one with Renault and Spook in it. 
The trajectory at which Ham's group had entered the battle had required them to move up the line of carts back to front. Trying to get to Renault first would have required passing by the five other carts, leaving their people still trapped. Ham obviously didn't intend to leave until Spook and Renault were free. And where Ham fought, the rebel soldiers held. There was a reason pewter arms were also called thugs. There was no subtlety to their fighting, no clever iron poles or steel pushes. Ham simply attacked with raw strength and speed, throwing enemy soldiers out of his way, laying waste to their ranks, leading his squad of 50 men toward the final prison cart. As they reached it, Ham stepped back to fight off a group of enemy soldiers as one of his men broke the cart's lock. Kelsier smiled with pride, eyes still searching for the Inquisitor. His men were few, but the enemy soldiers seemed visibly unsettled by the Ska rebels' determination. Kelsier's men fought with passion. Despite their other numerous hindrances, they still had this one advantage. This is what happens when you finally convince them to fight. This is what hides within them all. It's just so hard to release. Renault exited the cart, then stepped to the side, watching as his servants rushed free from their cage. Suddenly, a well-dressed figure burst from the melee, grabbing Renault by the front of his suit. Where's Valette? Which cage was she in? Kid, you're really starting to annoy me. Kelsier pushed himself a path through the soldiers as he ran toward the cart. The Inquisitor appeared, leaping out from behind a pile of soldiers. <clears throat> it landed on top of the cage, an obsidian axe grasped in each claw-like hand. The creature met Kelsier's eyes and smiled, then dropped from the top of the cage and buried an axe in Renault's back. <laughs> the Inquisitor turned toward Elend next. Kelsier wasn't certain if the creature recognized the boy. Perhaps the Inquisitor thought Elend to be a member of Renault's family. Perhaps it didn't care. The Inquisitor raised his axe to strike. She loves him. Kelsier flared steel within, stoking it, raging it until his chest burned like the ash mounts themselves. He blasted against the soldiers behind him, throwing dozens of them backward and streaked toward the Inquisitor. He crashed into the creature as it began to swing. The axe fell to the stones a few feet away. Kelsier gripped the Inquisitor by its neck as the two hit the ground. Then he began to squeeze with pewter-enhanced muscles. The Inquisitor reached up, grabbing Kelsier's hands, desperately trying to force them apart. Marsh was right. It fears for its life. It can be killed. To his side, Kelsier saw Ellen Venture stumble back. The girl is fine. She wasn't on the Renault barges. Go! Ellen paused uncertainly. Then one of his bodyguards finally appeared. The boy let himself get dragged away. Can't believe I just saved a nobleman. You better appreciate this girl. Slowly, with straining muscles, the Inquisitor forced Kelsier's hands apart. The creature began to smile again. They're so strong. The Inquisitor pushed Kelsier back, then flipped backward up to its feet. Its neck was red from Kelsier's grip, bits of flesh torn by his fingernails, but it smiled still. Kelsier pushed against a soldier, flipping himself up as well. To his side, he saw Renault leaning against the cart. Kelsier caught the Condra's eyes and nodded slightly. Renault dropped to the ground, axe in his back. Kelsier! Go! Renault is dead! Ham glanced at Renault's body, then nodded. He turned to his men to give the orders. Survivor! Kelsier spun. The Inquisitor strode forward, stepping with Pewter's lithe power, surrounded by a haze of atium shadows. Survivor of Hathson, you promised me a fight. Must I kill more Ska? Kelsier flared his medals. I never said we were done. Then, Kelsier smiled. He was worried, he was pained, but he was also exhilarated. All of his life, there had been a piece of him that had wished to stand and fight. He'd always wanted to see if he could take an Inquisitor. Vin stood, trying desperately to see over the crowd. What? I thought I saw Ellen. Here? That sounds a bit ridiculous, don't you think? Regardless, I'm going to try and get a better view. She grabbed the side of the alleyway. Be careful. If that Inquisitor sees you... Vin nodded, <laughs> scrambling up the bricks. <laughs> Once she got high enough, she scanned the intersection for familiar figures. Doxon was right. Elland was nowhere to be seen. One of the carts, the one off of which the Inquisitor had ripped the cage, lay on its side. What do you see? Renault is down! Vin squinted, burning tin. Looks like an axe in his back! That may or may not be fatal for him. I don't know a lot about Condra. Condra? Uh, what about the prisoners? They're all free. The cages are empty. Dox, there are a lot of ska out there. It looked like the entire population from the Fountain Square had crowded down to the small intersection. The area was in a small depression, and Vin could see thousands of Ska packing the streets, sloping upward in all directions. Ham's free! 
I don't see him alive or dead anywhere. Spook's gone too. And Kel? He's still fighting the Inquisitor. Kelsier flared his pewter, <laughs> punching the Inquisitor, careful to avoid the flat disks of metal sticking out of the front of its eyes. The creature stumbled, and Kelsier buried his fist in its stomach. <laughs> The Inquisitor slapped Kelsier across the face, throwing him down with one blow. Kelsier shook his head. What does it take to kill this thing? He pushed himself back up to his feet, backing away. The Inquisitor strode forward. Some of the soldiers were trying to search the crowd for Ham and his men, but many just stood still. A fight between two powerful Alamancers was something whispered about but never seen. Soldier and peasant stood dumbfounded, watching the battle with awe. He's stronger than I am. Kelsier watched the Inquisitor warily. But strength isn't everything. Kelsier reached out, grabbing smaller metal sources and pulling them away from their owners. Metal caps, fine steel swords, coin pouches, daggers. He threw them at the Inquisitor, carefully manipulating steel pushes and iron pulls, and kept his atium burning so that each item he controlled would have a fanning multitude of atium images in the Inquisitor's eyes. The Inquisitor deflected the swarming bits of metal. Kelsier, however, just used the Inquisitor's own pushes against it, pulling each item them back, whipping them around the creature. The Inquisitor blasted outward, pushing against all the items at once, and Kelsier let them go. As soon as the Inquisitor stopped pushing, however, Kelsier pulled his weapons back. The Imperial soldiers formed a ring, watching warily. Kelsier used them, pushing against breastplates, lurching himself back and forth in the air. The quick changes in position let him move constantly, disorienting the Inquisitor, allowing him to push his different flying pieces of metal where he wanted them. Keep an eye on my belt buckle. Uh, Doxon wobbled slightly as he clung to the bricks beside Vin. If I fall off, give me a pull to slow the fall, huh? Vin nodded, but she wasn't paying much attention to Dox. She was watching Kelsier. He's incredible! Kelsier lurched back and forth in the air, his feet never touching the ground. Bits of metal flew around him, responding to his pushes and pulls. He controlled them with such skill one would have thought they were living things. The Inquisitor slapped them away with a fury, but was obviously having trouble keeping track of them all. I underestimated Kelsier. I assumed that he was less skilled than the Mistings because he'd spread himself too thin, but that wasn't it at all. This... this is his specialty. Pushing and pulling with expert control. And iron and steel are the metals he personally trained me in. Maybe he understood all along. Kelsier spun and flew amid a maelstrom of metal. Every time something hit the ground, he flicked it back up. The items always flew in straight lines, but he kept moving, pushing himself around, keeping them in the air, periodically shooting them at the Inquisitor. The creature spun, confused. It tried to push itself upward, but Kelsier shot several larger pieces of metal over the creature's head, and it had to push against them, throwing off its jump. An iron bar hit the Inquisitor in the face. The creature stumbled, blood marring the tattoos on the side of its face. A steel helmet struck it in the side, tossing it backward. Were you the one who killed Marsh? Were you there when I was condemned years ago? The Inquisitor raised a warding hand, pushing away the next swarm of metals. It limped backward, putting its back against the overturned wooden cart. A sudden push of strength washed through the crowd, toppling soldiers, causing Kelsier's metal weapons to shoot away. Kelsier let them go. He dashed forward, rushing the disoriented Inquisitor, scooping up a loose cobblestone. The creature turned toward him, and Kelsier swung the cobblestone, his strength fueled almost more by rage than by pewter. He hit the Inquisitor square in the eyes. The creature's head snapped back, smacking against the bottom of the overturned cart. Kelsier struck again, repeatedly smashing his cobblestone into the creature's face. The Inquisitor reached claw-like hands for Kelsier, moving as if to jump forward. Then it suddenly jerked to a stop, its head stuck against the cart's wood. The spiked tips that jutted from the back of its skull had been pounded into the wood by Kelsier's attack. Kelsier smiled as the creature struggled to pull its head free from the wood. Kelsier turned to the side, seeking an item he had seen on the ground a few moments before. He kicked over a corpse, snatching the obsidian axe off the ground, its rough chipped blade glittering in the red sunlight. I'm glad you talked me into this. The Inquisitor's body slumped to the cobblestones. The head remained where it was, staring out with its eerie, tattooed, unnatural gaze, pinned to the wood by its own spikes. Kelsier turned to face the crowd, suddenly feeling incredibly wearied. His body ached from dozens of bruises and cuts, and he didn't even know when his cloak had ripped free. 
He faced the soldiers defiantly, however, his scarred arms plainly visible. The survivor of Hathsin. He killed an Inquisitor. The soldiers looked around, realizing with horror that they were surrounded by Ska. The peasants began to press in, and Kelsier could feel their anger and hope. Maybe this doesn't have to go the way I assumed. Maybe I don't have... Then it hit. Like a cloud moving before the sun, like a sudden storm on a quiet night, like a pair of fingers snuffing a candle. An oppressive hand stifled the budding ska emotions. So close. Up ahead, a single black carriage crested the hill and began to move down from the fountain square. The Lord Ruler had arrived. 